If you're an artist and you want to start making money as one, you're in the right video. I know it can be extremely frustrating, I was also there, I was just another high school student that wanted to make art his career but had no idea how. After several years and lots and lots of trial and error, I am now a full-time artist and I am here to tell you how so you can also do it. I am also gonna share my personal revenue sources with you so that you can know how it works in real life. First, let me answer three of your most frequently asked questions. Question number one, is there any money to be made as an artist? Yes, <laughs> definitely yes. I know a lot of artists that are making a very, very good living by being artists and doing what they love to do. Question number two, am I good enough? Maybe there is money to be made, but who tells me that me, uh, probably a beginner artist, has a right or has the leverage to actually make money out of this profession? Well, I'm here to tell you that yes, making money is not all about skill set, and we're gonna cover a lot of options on how you can make money out of art, starting with some of the hardest ones, and we're gonna go down until we reach at the end of the list some things that you can actually start doing today. It doesn't really matter what is your skill level. Question number three. How do I get those opportunities? Of course, I completely understand. I was also right there doing art, trying to improve my skills, but somehow there were no opportunities coming my way. I had an Instagram page that had no followers. I was showing my art around, maybe offering commissions and there were no clients. So I'm gonna tell you that there are three main ways on how you can achieve those goals. And it really depends on which one of the goals that we're gonna talk about you want to achieve, then you're gonna to have to make one of these skills or one of these assets happen. The first one, and this one is the one that you probably have already in your mind, is quality. But please don't be limited by that single one. Believe it or not, quality is not the most deciding factor out of you getting money out of your art or no. I have seen several artists that have an extreme good quality on their art, but if you don't know how to put your art out there and how to get those opportunities, then you're not gonna do anything with your quality. So if you're one of those artists that has a good quality or that you feel that you have a good quality and still those opportunities are not coming your way, then stick with me because I'm also going to have some tips for you. So how do you achieve quality in your art? Well, you probably know the answer and it is not the most exciting thing out there. You have to practice and you have to practice constantly and relentlessly. The good thing about quality is that it is a certainty. If you practice every single day how to improve your hands, you are going to end up drawing better hands. The second asset to get those opportunities is popularity. Unfortunately, we live in a world where popular people receive all the opportunities and if you see your art starting getting popular, you're going to see tons and tons of opportunities coming your way. Strangely enough, popularity and quality don't have to be connected at all. I actually know also several artists and I have seen their careers growth that don't have maybe the most exceptional quality, but because they follow certain rules, they make their drawings and their art in general way more popular and way more appealing for the public without actually improving their quality to an exceptional level. How to improve and achieve popularity is not as clear as how to improve your quality and that is very unfortunate but the thing is popularity has a very big factor that quality doesn't and that is luck. But there are definitely things that you can do to improve the odds of your art becoming popular. The key word in here is consistency. Consistency in style and in posting. You have to post extremely frequently and stick to one single style and one single theme. And I tell you, this will improve your odds of becoming popular with your art by a lot. The third way or the third asset for you to get more opportunities in your art is my favorite one, going niche. We are all in a hurry nowadays and if you want to start making money as an artist right now, this is the fastest and the surest way for you to start doing so with your art. Instead of trying to compete with a saturated market where a lot of other artists are already making exceptional art and are already very popular, try to go niche, try to find something, maybe a fandom that you are passionate about and there is not a lot of fan art going on about it. Or try to find a theme and a style that really 
identify you as an artist and go deep into it. So listen to me, it is not enough for you to become just the guy that likes to paint witches. You have to go a little bit deeper and become the guy that likes to paint witches in a cyberpunk style with blue hats. Once you go deeper, you're going to find people that will like your art because it differentiates and you become the artist that does this particular thing. Not only it is good for you because if you're painting something that actually makes you passionate, you're going to be happier, but also it helps the entire world to identify this art, this art style and this subject matter with you. Going niche is the most certain way for you to start making money as an artist. Okay, so enough about all of this. How do I start actually making money? What are some of those opportunities that you are talking about? Well, let's go through the list. I'm gonna start from the hardest one or the ones that is a little bit more challenging in terms of either quality or popularity. And we're going to go down until some of my favorites at the bottom of the list that you can start doing right now. The first one and the most boring out of all of them is to actually get an in-house job. If you're an artist that wants to work on the entertainment industry, you want to work in comics, you want to work in video games or maybe TV shows, series and things like that, you can go right now to artstation.com and go to the posted jobs in there and you're going to find that there are studios looking right this second for people that have the talent that they are needing. Storyboard artists, concept designers, 3D artists and many many more. Having worked on a studio myself, I can tell you studios have trouble finding people to fill their positions. So if you have the quality, if you have the chops to be able to start working on something like a video game studio and you're worried about getting money, start applying now. Start sending your portfolio to all of these postings and in no time, hopefully, you're going to get a job. The second one is very tight to the first one and it is freelancing. If you are not interested in an in-house job and you prefer to work from home, there are a lot, a lot of opportunities for you to start looking for those jobs, especially right now because of COVID, a lot of studios don't want people to work in-house and they prefer for them to work from home and the best thing about that is that then you are not limited to apply to studios that are in your area but you can just simply apply to any studio around the world and even have work with different studios. Now getting a freelance job at the start can be a little bit challenging because you don't know exactly where to apply or where to get the ball rolling but what I can tell you is that the best way for you to start freelancing is to go to conventions, to events, to, to simply any type of place where people that work on the industry gather. So I definitely recommend conventions. It is personally the method that I have used to get my foot on the door and start working on the entertainment industry. And I cannot think of any better one. Third method, and this is one of my favorite ones in this category of the high skill set ones, and it is to make courses. Let's face it, university is gonna die, especially for things that are more technical based, like for example, art. People have realized that you don't need to go to an actual physical brick and mortar school for you to learn. You can learn all your skills right from home and have video calls with your professors and just do everything that you need from the comfort of your home. So if you're somebody with any type of skill art related, you can be maybe a sculptor, a painter or a glass forger, whatever that is, and you have decent skills, you can start teaching other people right now. But Lucas, I don't have enough skills to teach people. I'm not a pro. Well, that is the best thing. You don't have to be an actual pro to start teaching anybody. You just have to be one step ahead the person that is trying to learn from you. There are a lot of people that I would actually prefer to learn from somebody that is a little bit closer to their level than from somebody that is an extreme pro and they cannot relate to him or her. And on top of that, these people that are on the top of their industries usually don't have the time or they don't dedicate themselves to teaching other people. So you're actually filling up a hole, a need in your industry. And the best thing about courses is that it can be passive. You guys can record your content, upload it somewhere, offer it online, and you don't have to do it again and again and again. And just like freelancing, you can do this thing from anywhere in the world. So what else do you want? Number four and similar to courses is mentoring. It has some pros and cons, but maybe it is the thing for you. The bad thing about it is that it is not passive. That means that you need to be there present, active, to be able to get some revenue out of it. But unlike mentoring, you can charge a premium with this because you're actually putting your time, your real time, into teaching other people your skills. 
And remember, to do this, you don't have to have master skills and teach professional artists how to do their job. You can literally be a high school student teaching kids of elementary or junior high how to do better art. That is already mentoring. Okay, so let's start talking about some of my personal revenue sources. I am here on my iPad and I am in an app called Notion that I use to organize everything about my life. So let's start here from the bottom, from the smallest one, and that is affiliate marketing. What it is, is that brands are going to pay you a very small commission out of products that you sell through your audience. But you can see that it's very small. It only covers 5% of my revenue, which is extremely small. But you can see that other channels, especially technology channels or people that just simply review other things and recommend them to other people have affiliate marketing actually as their primary revenue source. The second one right here is ad revenue and this one is already starting to be a little bit more considerable. That is 20% of my earnings are ad revenue and this is of course the ads that you watch at the start or in the middle of my YouTube videos. But mind that you don't have to have a YouTube channel to have ad revenue, you can have it in other ways. For example, if you are an artist that enjoys writing instead of video production, you can start a blog recommending your favorite brands for example. The third one in here is sponsorships and of course, if you're here in YouTube, you are very much used to channels having sponsors. Just like the ad revenue, sponsorships don't have to be specifically for YouTube. If you don't want or you're not interested to, to have a YouTube channel, then you can do other things. For example, a regular Instagram account could have a sponsor if they pay you, for example, by sharing different brands in your stories or in your posts. Of course, you know what's coming. We're talking about sponsorships and the sponsor of this video is Notion. That's right. The app that we are using right now is the sponsor of this video. What is Notion? Notion is an all-in-one organizational tool. And I have to clarify to you that even though people always doubt sponsorships and you may question yourself right now if I actually use Notion, I do use Notion. Yes, I do. And I love it. When I quit my job and I decided to go solo, one of the, my, my biggest, biggest worries was how I was going to organize myself to be able to stay productive and to keep a, a nice to-do list and keep track of all the things that I had to do as a solopreneur. And Notion is by far the best tool that I have found to be able to organize all of this. So not only I use it for things like this, like keeping track of revenue sources and making little tables to just organize and see my life step by step. But I also use it for everything else. For example, my content calendar, which is just a life savior. I just created a new page, named it. I put a little emoji for it, a cover. And now I am able to see all the videos that I'm going to have here and in the future and organize them one by one, not only by which ones are sponsored, but also what is the state of them. And I can see them in different views. For example, here I'm seeing it as a calendar view, but I also can see it as a board view. And I can see which videos have the footage recorded, which ones are scheduled, which ones are sponsored. And organizing your life in here is as easy as grabbing the video. For example, this is the video that you're watching right now. Talk about Inception. Start making money as an artist, Notion, I just grabbed this thing and I can drag it to, for example, editing. Once I am done recording this video, I put it in the editing category and I know that I have to edit this video. Having organizational tools that actually help you is a essential ingredient for you to be able to start making money, not only as an artist, but out of anything that you want. And all of these ideas on how to start making money actually require for you to have some type of discipline, some type of order in your life. So if you are lacking one of those things and if you are missing a tool that would make any of this easier, I definitely can honestly, personally recommend Notion because not only they are the sponsors of this video, but they are the tool that I use every day to organize my life. So that is sponsorships. And as I tell you, it can be a very, very lucrative one, depending on how much effort you put on it and how much you pursue it. In my case, it is 15% of my revenue, which is 
actually considerable but if I would make more sponsored videos then it would of course increase and let's talk about the last one and the biggest one in my revenue sources and that is sales most more specifically digital sales they consist of 60% of my revenue and I have to tell you it is one of the best business that you can create as an as an artist is by far one of the best ones if you're watching videos from my channel most probably odds are that you're a digital artist that means that you create things in Photoshop Procreate or any digital software which means that you use digital tools to create your artworks and that your artworks live in a digital world that means that any of those things anything that you can produce you can sell as a digital product if you are a 3d artist you can sell your models if you are a photographer you can sell your loots if you are a digital painter like myself you can sell psds of your artwork high resolution versions of your artwork or like myself you can sell brushes my pack of brushes is actually the only product that i am currently selling and that consists of 60 percent of my revenue so i am actually super super grateful for everybody that buys my brushes and well if you're interested you can find them down there in the description the possibilities for digital artists to sell digital assets digital products is just enormous so if you are not taking advantage of it you gotta start doing it so that's it those are my revenue sources and this was notion and i extremely extremely recommend that you start using it or at least give it a try i use it and it's completely for free i don't have to pay for any of the of the premium features because the free version is already so damn good so i'm gonna of course leave a link in the description for you guys to check it out and just simply have fun with it start organizing your life Thank you so much, Notion, for sponsoring this video. Ninth way that you can start making money as an artist, and we are reaching some of my favorite ones because these are the most entry-level friendly things that you can do already without being a super master in your art and not having hundreds of thousands of followers in your social media, and that is to start selling physical products. Why do I think that physical products are a bit more entry-level friendly than digital products is because you have things like conventions where you can go with your physical products and if they are niche enough, believe me, you are going to get some sales out of them. 11th way for you to start making money, this is Patreon or in any case, any type of crowdfunding. And remember, these ones are all about going niche. How does Patreon work is that you mount a site where you offer some type of service or content on a regular basis, let's say a painting every couple of weeks and people subscribe to you and make the commitment to pay you a certain amount of money depending on the benefits that you give them back. So a lot of artists, everyone and their mother has a patron and it's a very easy way, a very accessible way for any artist to start getting getting some type of monetary support on their art. And even though I am putting it kind of like a small thing, remember that there are artists like Sakimi-chan out there that made millions of dollars out of their Patreon because they went very specific on a certain niche. In the case of Sakimi-chan, well, it was very particular for a certain audience and she's still making a lot of money out of it. The 11th way and very similar to freelancing is commissions. You can think of commissions kind of like noob friendly freelance work. Instead of working for a studio, you're working usually for another individual and they usually find you through social media because they either like your style or they like maybe the theme that you practice in your artwork and they ask you to make some type of custom drawing or custom artwork. These ones don't usually pay very well, but the good thing is that if your art starts getting more and more in demand, you can just simply raise your prices. That will hopefully balance things out. But if you don't know how to get commissions, then this one you're going to love because it's one of my favorites and this is job boards. If you want to start getting money from your artwork, one of the easiest ways is to provide your services on sites like Fiverr. Sites like these make it so easy for artists to connect with clients because there are already a marketplace for people to look for those services. So if you have some skill that you can do repeatedly that you enjoy and that you can do it in a somehow fast way, then Fiverr is the easiest way for you to start making money out of your art. One of my favorite things of sites like this is that there are a lot of requests for services that are kind of fast to get a hold of. For example, there are a lot of requests for editing, for logo design and for graphic design for social media, which 
are things that even if you're not very skilled right now on any of them, if you dedicate yourself for a matter of a week, I promise you, you can get basic knowledge on each one of these fields enough to start charging for it in a site like this. And we are in the last one and this guys is my favorite one because I just think that this is so easy. This is so easy. It doesn't really matter if you are a a starting artist that doesn't have the best quality in your art. Doesn't matter if you are the, you don't have any type of popularity in social media. What matters in here is purely going niche and consistency and just putting out putting out work. And this is to upload your artwork to sites like Teespring, Redbubble, Society6, and any of those websites that what they do is that you upload your design and they make all the legwork, they do everything for you to make sure that this thing turns into a physical product. And again, you don't need to have any type of exceptional skills. You can just start doing designs of things that you already love or even things that you still have around and just simply upload them. And you, with each one that you upload, you are getting one more opportunity to sell this thing and make money out of it. And there you go, guys. That is all my advice on how to start making money as an artist. I hope that it works. I hope that one of these methods worked for you and that I gave you some ideas on how to start doing it. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.